Hello everybody, welcome to the Amazon European Masters. We're on to day two of groups and we've got nothing but bangers for you today. It's Fire Pretty Jamada with the first half of the day. Jamada, how are you getting on? Are you excited? Yes, I am very excited. I'm very excited to be with you on the Amazon European Aww. Masters. It's something that we've actually not been able to do together somehow. We spend a lot of time together, but we've never managed to make it to this tournament together. So I'm very excited to be here with you, Will, and I'm very excited after what we saw from yesterday's mm. games. Absolutely. We had loads of massive games yesterday. So much action and all started here. Ultra Liga taking on the LFL. Yeah, absolutely. And I mean, Vitaly B coming out looking absolutely amazing in my opinion. I think Go Rogue definitely looked maybe not as strong as maybe some people were hoping. I think Go Rogue definitely looked very strong domestically and there's a lot of talk about how strong Poland are as a region right now. But against Vitaly B, they really didn't manage to show up properly. Here though, Atleta versus LDLC. This was a much closer game than maybe people were anticipating. I think LDLC came out looking a little bit sloppy and I think Atleta maybe caught them off guard initially with Enz pulling out his Draven so early on in the tournament, right? I think Atleta if they have a slightly more traditional draft in terms of just having a, a slightly different and more hype scaling AD carry, I think they had more of a, a way in in that game and to the later stages. And of course, use versus a Bison's was quite the exciting one. Random pulling out the Ivern mid. He's very known, of course, of pulling out all of these very wacky picks. Decides to come out, swing it into use, uh, but unfortunately wasn't able to pick up the win. Use with their very traditional hype scaling jinx, Victor. And of course, Ruby and Reptile ended up taking over this game come the end of it. And of course, also Lorox as well picked up so many kills. And then, of course, the final game that we saw here, Bifrost up against Fnatic Queso, NLC taken down by the Spanish region in the end. And it looked very, very comfortable. Bifrost backs to the wall for large portions of this game, but in the end, we're not able to make a comeback or make any changes. But hey, that's only six games down. We've got so many more in the group stages to be bringing you. And hey, we know what a lot of these teams are about. We don't necessarily know what they're all up to. Group B still unplayed. But let's have a quick look at the standings to see exactly who won, who lost, and who is yet to play. As you can see, Jamada, we were talking about this with a couple of the other talent, and it's very much a case of the results are what we expected, but the routes we took to get there, maybe a little bit less so. Yeah, I think definitely yesterday, some of the games, whilst like you say, we ended up with the expected results, games a lot closer than maybe anticipated, right? I think LDLC... Not necessarily looking shaky or anything. I think Athletic are just showing up and playing a very strong game uh, and their own game yesterday into LDLC. I think as well, you know, Fnatic maybe taking a little bit longer to close out on Bifrost than maybe anticipated given how the early game went. Uh, but yeah, like you say, everyone picking up wins where we expected it. It's just the route to get there was definitely not what we expected. And we've got Group B coming through as well. We're going to see all of those teams in Group B playing today. But this is exactly the matchups that we're going to be watching. So Unicorns of Love Sexy Edition will be taking on Atleta Esport in our first matchup of the day. And honestly, there's nothing but great games here. I'm especially looking at the second half of the day. You've got X7 Esports KCOP coming in hot at 8 p.m. today. Yeah, no, I think that's obviously the, the biggest match to watch today, right? X7, Kami Corp. There's already been a little bit of, you know, back and forth on Twitter between uh, the, you know, the organizations and sometimes the fandoms too. So I'm very excited to watch that, of course, as in an LC representative, uh, but also just as a League of Legends enjoyer. I think Bifrost BDS also has promised to be a very exciting game. Uh, and LDLC, Bison too. But I think our opening game of the day is one that I'm really looking mm -hmm. towards and saying, I kind of want to see what Atleta can do into Unicorns because Atleta looked a lot stronger than maybe anticipated given you know the result against ldlc yesterday so i think against you know unicorns here i want to see whether they're going to stick to you know what the the kind of their own style of what we saw yesterday or whether they're going to stick to something maybe or move towards something a little more traditional and i mean of course we've got the first look at game illusion that we're going to get this tournament when they yeah, go up against exactly. Team phantasma and for that case so looking slow steady disciplined whether they can bring through another win against an esca team who passed a couple of interesting decisions towards the end of the matchup <laughs> looks really scrappy and really strong when they came to fighting and taking those picks early so i'm really excited to see how that game goes but let's turn our attention towards this first game of the day shall we because we talked a lot we were sitting down to do some prep before the broadcast and a lot of our talking points actually came down to atleta because hey they're zero one at the moment but they look they looked really really interesting the way they were playing they looked very very strong in parts of their game and on a different day, they could have taken down LDLC. Yeah, and I think it, it plays into both parties there. I think LDLC maybe yesterday, maybe a little bit complacent. It's, mm. it's hard for you to say. Maybe they just had a bit of an off day. They obviously still played a very strong game of League of Legends enough to take down Atleta. But I think if Atleta were maybe a little more on the ball with some forms of execution, particularly sort of like 15, 20 minutes onwards, I think their early game was fine. But the issue was when they were making the plays they're making in the early game, for example, they went for the bottom lane dive 
prior to that, they'd lost the Herald. Ica managed to sneak away with the Herald. And whilst that play was going on in the bottom lane, Ica just took, I think it was four plates all to himself as a LeBlanc. Mm. That's absolutely absurd amounts of goal to be cross-mapped onto one individual member. I think if they can clean up these kind of moments uh, in the game where they go for their own plays, and if they know they're giving up the cross-map, as long as they're not giving up too much, I think they can be okay into a Unicorns team, which can definitely play a much slower version of League of Legends. I think yesterday, obviously, they kind of had to play a slightly slower game with their draft and also into what Bisons were playing. But if they play, again, a very slow draft today, I think a Slitter can honestly take it to them and probably procure a relatively large gold lead if Unicorns are caught sleeping. And I'm very interested because you mentioned one of the things that a lot of the talent that was covering the games yesterday was talking about, which is what separates our really top tier contender teams to the teams that are very strong, dominant in their own regions, but perhaps aren't going to make it as far on the European stage is the idea of, hey, anyone can make a dive happen. Anyone can get a pick down in the bot lane, in the top lane when you've got a numbers advantage. But what are you turning that into? What are you gaining in a macro sense if it's not just going to be one kill, two kills? How are your plates doing? Is there a dragon? Is there a rift herald? What can you gain? And for a couple of these teams that we're going to be watching today, they weren't really able to make those correct decisions and the trade-off wasn't always the best for them. So that's especially what we're going to be watching out for in this first game. As you said, Unicorns, they play a slightly slower version of League of Legends. They are capable of speeding things up. We've seen that a little bit, especially in play-ins as yeah. they came forward. Yeah, exactly. I mean, they're yet to drop a game at this tournament. At this Amazon U Masters, they are currently undefeated. Mm. So uh, we'll see if they can keep that run going for now, because they definitely do look very strong. Uh, and like you say, and like we've sort of mentioned, they do lean on a slightly slower style of play sometimes. But as seen uh, at play-ins, they're very capable of playing fast-paced drafts. It's just whether or not they actually feel like they have to, it seems like. Uh, and I feel like Inter Atleta, this is maybe the kind of team where you don't necessarily want to rest on your laurels mm. just on the off chance that, you know, you draft again something like a Victor and a Jinx where maybe depending on the matchups, there's not really too much agency. And then all of a sudden they come out with this super aggressive early to mid game draft and they just take over the game and it just feels impossible to play from behind. I mean, if they can make strong early game plays and they can take kills away from LDLC, then any team's going to have to be looking over their shoulder and saying, huh, maybe we need to be prepping for these guys a little bit differently. And of course, Atlanta, you'll hear us talk about them a lot. You might not have heard the name if you're just a standard Amazon European Masters fan who just watches this league and maybe your own region. They are a new name within the scene. This is their first split in the ERL. They came second in the regular season and then taking down Machco to get themselves their spot in the main event. Of course, Machco, a lot of the Italian fans were saying is a very, very strong team. But let's have a quick look at the lineup that we've got going forward in this game. It's going to be Unicorns of Love coming in first. Ibo, Lorox, Ruby, Reptile, and Dreamer Ace. A lot of familiar faces from the Prime League there. Yeah, definitely a lot of very familiar faces. Lorox you'd have seen at the tournament before. Ruby and Reptile, very strong carries, uh, especially it feels like Unicorns, they love to lean on Ruby in the later stages of the game. Uh, and they tend to, despite Ibo definitely being capable of playing some stronger carries, leave him to his own devices very frequently mm. so that they can ensure that Ruby and Reptile are set up for the later stages of the game. And Reptile had an absolutely amazing second half of the game performance on the, the Jinx yesterday. Was left to his own device a lot by Dream Race moving around the map and trying to get things going in other lanes. And he was kind of just sitting behind tower living his best life and was able to eventually come out a couple of the late game team fights, double kills, triple kills, doing all the damage we know hyper carries are famous for. But this Unicorns uh, love a, a sexy edition lineup, definitely an exciting one to keep your eyes open for. And as you mentioned, Ruby might be the star player. Lots of these teams where they go far in the Amazon European Masters have that one shining light. Do they have that on the other side? We're going to have a look at the roster coming up against Unicorn to love in this game at Leda. We got Gabo, Mighty Dragon, Zonix, Ends, and Cosmet. Yeah, a very strong, very experienced uh, mm. lineup. Uh, no matter where you look, Ends, Cospect, Gabo, they've all played and won the PG NAS together. Uh, My Dra Dragon and Zonix uh, as well, a lot of time in the LCL and CIS region, uh, where actually, funnily enough, they've been denied respectively MSI and Weld appearances by Unicorns of Love. So this is kind of, in a way, a bit of a grudge match for them. Uh, when you think about sort of player against organization, I think they're going to feel very, very great if they walk away with a win here, not just because it'll be their first win uh, here at the tournament, but more specifically, because they'll be taking down the Unicorns. As you said, this team, all these players have been to European Masters before. They've been to plenty of European Masters between them, but they've never really got out of groups. They're very, very experienced yeah. at this level of play, but now we've got the, the dream team together on our letter. Are they going to be able to go one step further and actually find their exit to the quarterfinals rather than their exit 
with a plane ticket home. Yeah, I mean, I think it's definitely a very interesting topic to talk about when you come when it comes to the PG Nats, because I think, mm. you know, having sort of seen a lot of discussion around Match Co and then also Athleta, uh, I feel like a lot of people, you know, even post playoffs are still kind of mentally ranking Match Co as the slightly stronger team uh, in comparison to Athleta. But I think right now, given what I saw, you know, from Match Co planes and what I've seen at least from the one game sample size here at this tournament for uh, Athleta, maybe Athleta could actually make a run if they can get things going for themselves, right? If they can put themselves in a position where, you know, they don't have to win the game in the first 20 minutes, like what well, I felt like it was yesterday against LDLC. Mm-hmm. Uh, but again, traditionally Italian teams, they do come in with these slightly, I'll dub it spicier style, styles of play where they want to kind of, you know, kind of get things over and done with in about 25 minutes. Otherwise, things don't typically go their way. Uh, but we'll see because like we've kind of highlighted a lot of experience in this roster and there's naturally with that experience going to come a lot of flexibility uh, and hopefully for them today against the Unicorns, it will work out for them because going 0-2 or starting the group 0-2 is often not like a death sentence, but it's going to be very hard to come back mm. from that 0-2 to try and make a run into quarters. Yeah, setting yourselves up with a massive mountain to climb coming out of your first two days. And the first two days here at the Amazon European Masters, it's never something that you want to be doing. And I know that's really easy to say, but with Unicorns of Love, if they can grab themselves a second win, the opposite is almost the same to be true because they come in and say, look, yeah. we've taken down two teams already. We're going to have to play you again. So we know that we're already stronger. We already know that we've got your number at least once. Now it's just a case of grabbing a couple of extra wins and qualifying out of groups into those best of series. We are coming very, very shortly towards our first game of the evening. Jamana, these two teams, there's so much history, there's so much storyline with a lot of the players involved. I can't wait to get started. No, no, neither can I. Uh, and I'm really looking forward most mostly to the draft, I think. I want to see what Atleta will do different compared to yesterday. I also want to see whether or not, you know, Unicorns watch the game yesterday and say, okay, do we want to kind of sit on our hands for the first 15-ish minutes or so, play a slower style draft where, you know, the, the sort of standard what we see mostly on 12-6, where it's mm. kind of an early aggressive jungler, sometimes more often than not sort of a weak side top, hype carry AD, something that scales in the mid lane, or are they going to do sort of more aggressive drafts like what we saw out of them in planes where they lock in something like the Silas with a kill jungler as well, and they just try and play off the mid jungle 2v2 and move that pressure down. That's what I'm excited for for Unicorns here today. Well, let's have a look as we move into Champ Select for our first game of the day. Unicorns of Love Sexy Edition on the blue side. We've got a letter on the red. Jamada, I know that you love yourself a Champ Select and there's going to be no trundles around here. No, there will be no trundles around here. Hopefully that also is an omen of no trolling in the Champ Select. We'll see. Uh, but the response will be that Volley Bear removed away. Of course, Volley Bear is pretty much unanimously B1 by most teams if it's open. Sometimes you do see it traded, of course. Poppy will be taken off the table away from Athleta 2. Uh, I wonder if they're trying to set up for an early Java pick then with the Volley Bear off the table. Uh, with that Poppy gone too, that's maybe what the first thing that comes to my mind. Tom Kench taken off the board as well for Dreamer Ace uh, and Zeri, uh, which more often than not, it feels like we see on the red side the Ruby as opposed to blue, but we've definitely seen a shift of uh, that priority. And Vega, I'm sure you'll be happy to see, is removed away, which says to me, now that that Jinx has been locked in, Athleta are likely going to take the Ari in the early rotation. It's something yeah. that we've definitely seen a lot of yesterday as well, I think. 100% uh, presence, and in the four games that it was up, it was taken in either the first or the second rotation, B2, B3, uh, on the blue side. Uh, but AD locked in. I expect that Ari to probably be locked in here, and the Mighty Dragon uh, can maybe get a pick. Uh, but for now, it seems like they're maybe going to just pick up Enz's Zaya to ensure that they have uh, the 80 to 80 matchup and they just want to hide uh, what they will pick up. I mean, picking up the Ari here would make a lot of sense. Of course, we also saw a letter their Fresh was banned against them last time around. They've had a preference for that champion okay. a lot during their time in playoffs over at the PG Nats. But it's going to be the Jarvan, as you said, locked in. And Unicorns are love maybe considering that one themselves with the Poppy ban away. But this allows stuff like the Ari to have got through. There's other jungle options yeah. as well. Stuff like the Zinzao and Hecarim <laughs> spring to mind. I think something like Viego Ari can be kind of powerful Ooh, yeah, here yes. for for, uh, for Unicorns. I think Lorax is very, very prominent uh, on this champion, very, very proficient. I think last tournament was in Lorax, I believe it was just mm. like least in Viego, and that was all he played. Uh, but for now, it's actually just going to be an early NAR rotation here for Ibo, and that Ari will eventually come in. So it looks like Unicorns are going to have to more times than not have their jungle pool pinched out here come the second ban phase. And for Atleta, I think if you want to go for something like Rakan, just because you can move into something like uh, support bands if you're okay with Lorax's champion pool staying up, uh, you can do that. But 
They're definitely looking at either a mid counter pick, which Silas would make the most sense here. I think it's one of the few champions that can match Ari uh, in lane in, sort of, in terms of, sort of like being able to stay through a lot of the damage and then also gaining access to the Spirit Rush. What's scarier than a Silas that already dashes like three times and giving Silas three more extra dashes that reset? It's not going to be fun if you manage to get Zonix going as we move into our second round of bans. Notably, Ibo does love this Nar. I believe before, not taking into account yesterday, he played either Nar or Graves in 13 games in playoffs over in his the Prime League region or in play-ins for the Amazon European Masters. So definitely knows his way around the Yordle. Actually, it's going to be a letter who ban away the fresh, and I wouldn't be shocked to see Nautilus also take it off the table. Yeah, I wonder if we're just going to end up seeing a bunch of support bands here come out from uh, both teams. I mean, if you're used, you could also go towards things like Gabo's Camille and also Gabo's Jace, perhaps, uh, to sort of remove away these counters into the Nar, and that would also obviously be the other sensible option here. Uh, but we could also just see them remove away support options that are going to sort of enable Jarvan to dive more, or actually just engage options in general, moving away uh, the Orn from Gabo. I think that also makes a whole bunch of sense. So I think, in general, uh, Unicorns here, they're looking to remove away engage options where it comes from the top side or the bottom side. I think that's out there eyeing up. I would imagine just more dive into what unicorns are running right now. Come that R4 pick. Yeah, and we're just gonna have to see what they decide to remove. Of course, the Rakan could make sense down in that support role. It's already got the Zyra alongside yeah. it. We don't really see these two champions play together. And I mean, taking away dive is gonna be the least sin. Someone who is often banned away in the first rotation. So it's good that they've remembered him. Yeah, it's good that I have to remember them, but I imagine Lorox will probably end up leaning on the Viego now. Akali actually taken away from Gabo. Uh, so, the likes of the Camille uh, and, of course, uh, the Jace are still there. So both, you know, I think would fit very well into what uh, Athena's comp currently can do. It can either dive, it can also kind of just allow ends to play at range uh, with the Feathers. And I think both of those champions kind of play into either style, right? You go Jace, you have more poke. You go uh, the Camille, you have more dive. It's really up to you. Uh, and you can hold on to your support pick, or you can actually go for something like the set, which we saw yesterday out of Gabo. This technically also works as a flex, mm. too, we have to remember. So now, Unicorns, they have to think quite a lot about what they want to run into the bottom lane. Uh, because if they run something that's, you know, super tanky, something like the Nautilus, it's very easy to just chuck that straight back in. Uh, and Prospect uh, can have a pretty fine time uh, in that matchup. Don't tease me with a Kane hover, because this is a pretty good Kane game. But uh, I expect that we will see the Viego come out. Uh, and that is what we do end up seeing Lorox on. And now for support, I think you either want a little bit of engage here because you are definitely lackluster on some of that sort of long range engage right now. You're more about the pick with the Ari mm. charm and sort of playing pockets of fog. I think you need something that can actually get fights going. Leona, Norwest, both up. I think you probably take the Leona side of the matchup, if either. Uh, and it seems like that's what we will get out of here. Now it's going to be a case of Atleta deciding whether they want to send that set up to topside like we've seen it before, or whether they want to flex it down into the support role up against this Leona and give themselves a different matchup into the Nar. I mean, set Nar isn't the worst matchup that Gabo is ever going to see, especially when it comes to a ranged top laner. We don't, we don't love those around these parts, but it's going to be a question of what they want to go for. And of course, the Rakan was left available, and it does have that little bit of extra when it goes with the Zarya. So it's going to be locked in and talk about engage. It looks like a letter have found the last piece of their puzzle. Yes, and they have a whole bunch of it rounding out the draft of the Rakan. Uh, just kind of says to me that they are going to be looking to moving forward uh, more times than they not. But I think, honestly, Unicorns, they have a very good draft at dealing with champions that want to come into them. If you're moving mm. into Ari, Ari's always going to be able to Spirit Rush back. It's kind of setting up for easy uh, skill shots to land as well. Viego loves champions diving onto him because then he just gets to play the game, period. Uh, and as for Nar, of course, you can get into that Mega Nar state if you've got loads of champions diving on you. You can always peel off your carries with the Nar ult too. So I think loads of strong options against what they are running for Unicorns, but also a lot of strong proactivity options as well for both these sides. Not just Athlete, obviously, who you look towards and you say they've got the Jarf and they've got the Rakan. Even the Silas is going to have strong options because he's going to gain access to pretty powerful mm. engage tools as well from Unicorns. I think we're looking at a very explosive draft here, no matter where you look. Top, mid, bottom side, the 2v2, the 3v3s. Everything looks like it could kind of go either way here. I don't necessarily edge any particular draft or, you know, sort of skirmish power towards either side. I'm scared, and here's why. Atleta cannot let anyone die in team fights. Because no. as soon as one person dies, Diego, Ari, Jinx. It's, it's Reset City, basically. It's, it's spooky. It's very, very spooky. And I think especially the power of the base abilities on all of these champions mm. as well, particularly the top side, right? Base Breaker, Haymaker, Flag and Drag, Silas Kit. 
if if Lorix gets his hands on any of these champions, it's probably going to be another reset that follows up. And like you say, uh, Reptile, Ruby, Ari, Jinx, excited, more Spirit Rush dashes. It's going to be very obnoxious to deal with. But uh, we'll, we're here. And we've we done are. it. We're going to get our way. first game. Ooh, we're first game. Amazon European Masters of the day. Of course, there were plenty of games yesterday and in a play ins as well. We've got Unicorns of Love Sex Edition on the blue side, taking on Atleta Esports on the red. Unicorns, of course, have themselves a win already in the group stages. Atleta chasing their first after defeat yesterday. Both of these teams. Honestly, I'm expecting a close run game. Yeah, no, I, uh, so am I. I think uh, Atleta yesterday, their performance against uh, LDLC is nothing to sneer at. I think they could have very easily. Uh, walked away with a win given how they performed. I think LDLC maybe not playing at their ceiling entirely yesterday. One of the things where maybe something like you haven't played a stage game in a couple of weeks, two weeks or so. Mm. Things like that can sneak in. Same case really, but still came out definitely swinging. Again, it's just about those cross-map plays, right? When you're making a play on a side lane in the early stages, if it's getting cross-mapped for effectively you know, the same amount of gold that you're maybe making off the play, with less players invested, uh, the play is effectively a net negative as lanes have started up. Minions are here. Junglers both starting on red buff. And I expect Mighty Dragon will probably path down towards the bottom side uh, and maybe try and get some early action going. Something that is worth noting as well when we talk about that is an amazing point you bring up talking about how these teams might be a little bit cold coming through in their first game, not having played on stage for a couple of weeks. Previously in Amazon European Masters, in this tournament, teams that come through play-ins tend to do pretty well because they're warmed up, they've played a little bit more here in this environment, and teams have gone on to come through play-ins to win the tournament in the past. Obviously not last year, um, with the LFL defending back-to-back -back titles, but teams like Misfits spring to mind. I believe Rogue made a deep run similarly, maybe even won it coming through play-ins. So for Unicorns to be all warmed up and ready to go, could be a big advantage. Yeah, no, I 100% agree with you, especially when you consider how rigorous the play-in schedule actually mm. is as well. You have to play multiple games a day, uh, two times. Uh, and especially when you consider the format here, week one, right? You obviously have, you know, the slightly more spread out uh, schedule, but week two, everybody plays their final three games on the same day. And Unicorns, they're going to be used to that uh, already having come through the planes, like you say. Lorox, using the information that he gained from Mighty Dragon's attempt at that level two and will steal away the Raptors. So getting a little bit of counter jungling going has no caps on the opposite side to be cross mapped. However, look at where MX Dragon is right now. Yeah. Mid lane. Looking for it. Ruby goes low, but the Ignite takes Silas lower. We'll be able to survive with that pot running. Remember kids, always have a pot running oh. when you're fighting because <laughs> it could just save your life twice. Yeah, it could save your life twice indeed, Sonix. Gonna be probably grinning at himself. Getting away with that greed, stepping up, played the Rune King isn't enough to actually take him down, but it was certainly very close. Uh, but this wave state is not particularly in a great spot for him, and Jarvan isn't gonna really gonna be able to help him because Lorox is right here and to respond if they try and get the shove in. So Ruby in a pretty comfortable position. Chuck's uh, Orbital Deception through, which might actually make it bounce back, and see Zonix kind of notices this and decides to show face again now that he's back at half HP with those pots ticked. Hits level four, decides to go for the reset. Uh, and of course, both these laners actually have Ignite. That's something to definitely on, this, on Zonix's end of things. It's not something we often see on the Silas uh, lanes. We'll almost by default just end up with Teleport. It's what we see in the meta almost always. So definitely looking towards that kill pressure, just wasn't able to find it in that exchange. Dragon just clearing up his Krugs as there's a little bit of support from Gabo who's putting down some vision, potentially looking towards that top blame. Mighty Dragon had a very decent performance yesterday on the Volley Bear. Of course, we saw that one banned away because it's one of the strongest champions in the meta, but was making a lot of stuff happen for his team early. And unfortunately, when the game slowed down a little bit, LDLC were just able to take control. But I expect to see similar from him today. Probably not in top lane as Ibo is pushed under his tower, but we could see a return play mid. Yeah, definitely could see a return play mid. I would love to see uh, Max Dragon link up with Zonix again mm. in the mid lane. I think especially in this matchup, right, you have so much setup onto Ari, especially pre-6. She's already level 5 though, so you're kind of working on maybe 3, 4 more waves at most if you're lucky. Uh, in order to try and uh, pick up a kill before that Spirit Rush comes online. Because before, the, uh, after then, it's going to be very difficult. Of course, Onyx, however, will technically gain access to that armor himself uh, if he needs it for the setup on a chase down. 
Uh, but we'll see whether or not they can actually attack that mid lane. Haven't really looked too much at the bottom lane either, uh, where Reptile is pretty much even with ends on the CS department. Uh, nothing really too exciting to talk about in the bottom lane, which often it feels like, I don't know, maybe coming from the NLC, we see so many bloody bottom lane 2v2s. So frequently it's just a bit of a fresh of, uh, breath of fresh air. His Dream Ace is doing his best to hold this freeze uh, as Reptile did try and take an early base, and it seems like Dream Ace will be successful in holding this for the most part. Takes a beat of Rune Cospec though, who just wants to make it as painful as possible. Lorax going to be starting up the Dragon Mountain yeah. first one of the day for us, and should be able to steal this one away. Dragon's in the neighborhood, but in the top lane, Ivo putting some damage down onto Gabo, throwing one more rock before backing away. Yeah, ultimate exchanged up here as well by Ibo. Gabo still level five, should gain access to that suplex quite soon. And Lurox, just good timing, recognizes the ends, goes for that reset as <laughs> my dragon will try and jump onto him with that flagging dragon, not going to be able to quite reach it. Pretty clean dragon take there by Lorox, just leveraging the information he has at hand, knows that at the very least it will only really be Cospect, maybe MX Dragon uh, at worst, but will always have the rotation of Ruby coming in first. Now that wave has crashed back in. Sonics, who has first move, but still level five. Oh, charm goes wide. And Sonics will be able to walk away. But if that charm connects, you imagine, honestly, with Lorox right there, Flash, Spectral, more Dream Ace right behind him, that would have been a dead Silas. You've got to imagine so, but this time around, he drinks another pot and just stands on the tower, waiting to collect that wave as it crashes on through. And with the first dragon going down, about a minute and a half for the Rift Herald spawn, it's time for the supports just to go on, go on a walk, visit the beautiful sights of the top side of Summoner's Rift and gain as much fishing control as they can as second buffs will be spawning. But something that I want to just bring to everyone's attention, Zonix in the mid lane on this Silas. This is his fourth game on the champion since the beginning of playoffs over in the PG Nationals. Currently a 100% win rate on the champ. So oh, okay. definitely knows his way around the Silas. And as you mentioned before, he's been given, thankfully by Unicorns of Love, a lot of really, really nice tools to utilize. Yeah, no, he definitely has. Uh, there's no real shortage of a good ultimate besides maybe the Jinx Rocket. So no matter when he presses that R key, you expect should be okay. And Ibo has really been giving Gabo a beating mm. in this lane for the last couple of minutes now, two minutes or so. Last time we panned up here, Gabo was being forced out at a level disadvantage this time. Ibo just kind of runs him down with the hyper procs. Sonix does have the Spirit Rush in back pocket right now. My dragon is actually walking down towards the bomb side. Herald is spawning up soon, so if he does go for a bomb side play at this moment in time, with Lorax being where he is, having cleared all his camps and being on that top side with both solo lane priorities, if he shows down there, that should be a herald for use. But it seems like now that they are actually going to try and make the rotation up towards the mid lane themselves. In many pockets of fog right now, <laughs> but the jungle and support are going to spoil each other out on this sweeper. I think Dream Bear is a little bit too tanky, but the fight is going to kick off regardless yeah. as Cospect diving on forward towards the Silas. Just to give him a little bit of a shield as Viego, no interest in partaking, just wants to be up there, there taking go. down the Rift Herald. And hey, last game it was we we talked about making trades, and this time around Alena didn't even get anything for the exchange. Yeah, exactly. I think this is just good jungle pathing from Lurox to basically clear most of his camps from the bottom side. No cross map in the jungle. Mighty Dragon didn't go for the bottom side play either. Uh, and it just ensures that with both uh, top and mid having shoving lanes and first move, that he would always get that Herald. Nearly uncontested as Sonic's. He's pretty nice to trade Spirit Rush. Ooh, I think he's dead. A lot of damage. First blood goes the way Ooh. of Ruby. Yeah, Ruby just comes out big there with the Ignite. And Sonic just doesn't really have much of an answer. Once that Ignite is down as well, of course, the Kingslayer healing is just cut uh, by too much. If he even wanted to try and respond there, just eats that extra Orb of Deception as well, which kind of just puts him in lethal range, gets run down, and now he's also going to miss that massive wave. No teleport to come back into the lane. No one's even there meeting it. I think actually Dream Ace is taking a plate in the mid lane. I'm not too sure. Did stay to get that wave crashed up in there. And now Lorox with the Herald, I think. More times than not, you just put it into Reptile's back pocket. Mm. Makes the most sense. You can definitely go up towards the top side if you really feel like it. Ibo has been having a very, very good time. As again, we pan up towards the top side to see him having a very successful trade. I think your Jinx is your hyper carry. You want it in her back pocket. I think priority has definitely been back and forth, but I think you can definitely leverage the fact that now Ruby has a lead in this mid lane, should have first move down towards the bottom side, get priority in the mid lane, move down as a pair, Lurox and Ruby, and try and make this wave crash. Maybe they're trying to work on this wave here, but the issue is we're seeing a response it's be from a player. Three, three as Lorax coming on through. This is the first big fight of the game. Woo! First kill goes over to Reptile as ends, standing on the side of Kalis, and keeps Leona in place, and it'll be one more feather, this time from the Rakan. 
to secure another kill. Atlanta go two for zero. And this is just a great read from Aflea. Honestly, they can see the wave is stacking up slowly. They know Ruby is almost always going to be able to pick up wave priority in the mid lane whenever Ruby feels like it. And now, instead, use, I think, doing the correct thing, just trying to make the rotation up from the mid lane of Zorix and just dropping the Herald here to at least get some more plates in a trade across the map. But Aflea, they really do read out on that plate superbly. It was definitely a little bit telegraphed with that slow wave stack, but nonetheless, very impressive that they were able to counter out the play and win out the 3v3. I just... Putting some pain down in the top side, throwing more of those drills. And this is what we talked about going into this game from what we saw yesterday, right? Aleta make a good return play. Oh, oh Gabo. He wasn't in shop. We always love to see that. So he dodges out the Jinx ultimate. But immediately, Lorox goes mid, grabs himself some gold and four flakes down in the mid lane as Ibo has to hop away. Let's have another look at this fight. And where does it start going wrong? I mean, I think it's just the fact that, you know, Reptile, Dream Ace, they're right on top of each other. And of course, Atleo, Jarvan in the bottom bush, ready to respond to that knock up the grand entrance from Prospect. Just great chain CC, really. That's where it goes wrong. There's no response from Dream Ace. Wasn't able to drop the solar flare. I think the issue is for Unicorns that they actually just can't respond mm -hmm. to the counterplay. We got Dragon spawned up, though. Second of the game will be Ocean. So these two teams could look to play around that one and reveal what we're going to get as our Soul Drake first game in this Amazon European Masters second day of group stages. However, Atleta on the top side, maybe wanting to relieve some pressure on Gabo, who, as you've mentioned a couple of times, we haven't been watching too much of this top lane because there haven't been kills or priority around it. But the Nara is being a bit of a bully. Yeah, definitely is being a bit of a bully. Gabo falling quite far behind in CS, actually. Mm. As well, 25 CS or so down not having the best of times in this lane. And of course, did pick up the set yesterday, picked it up here, knowing he would be into the Nart. Just hasn't been able to find that trading success. Sort of after that level five, level six mark, and down here now on the bottom side, it will be Unicorns picking up this dragon yet again. So this will put them on a fast track to a potential early salt. What will we get? Looks like Infernal. And I think both these teams really use the Infernal so well. A lot of very quick spell procs on both ends. Is that Infernal passive itself will proc quite quickly and of course so many damage carries the additional of that just that's always going to be helpful as my dragon just going to slip away from Ibo there as mid lane 1v1 again yeah Zolix in trouble he's been ignited so there's not that much healing coming down yeah. the nice charm dives forward dodges away from the other ultimate Ooh. and Ruby can't apply the finishing touch Zolix gets away with murder yeah, Q1 just goes wide there from Ruby. I think he also had the option additionally of just spirit rushing again forward, getting the extra proc of damage, and then probably killing Zonix more often than not. But instead, off to the slightly safer play, goes for that Q1, misses out on the orb deception, and unfortunately isn't able to find himself that kill. Wouldn't have quite been a solo as Dream Ace did manage to get the solar flare down and find the slow and a little bit of damage, but close enough to it, honestly. And despite having the counter pick in this mid lane, Zonix has just not been having a good time into Ruby. Ruby has been running this lane. Mm and has been given so much advantage from Lurox as well, giving him those yeah. three, three of those four plates were given over by Lurox on the Viego, and that kind of gold is going to be amazing with the Everfrost already being secured for the Ari, giving that extra utility and allowing for those 1v1 plays to be a little bit easier to hold the Silas down. But plates are going to be falling off very, very soon. It looks like Zonix is going to be able to grab any for himself. Ends might just be looking to take one more before we hit the 14 minute mark. But honestly, we saw a lot of speed and a lot of action in the early games yesterday. Today's been a little bit more tentative so far. Yeah, definitely has been. Only three kills in the first 14 minutes of game one here. But definitely a lot more poking and prodding, it feels like, as opposed to actual overall commits. As uh, Gabo probably gonna eat a nut but the wallop goes wide. Looking towards him. The mid lane tower will fall immediately after the 14 minute marks. No plates to defend it. This time around, it will be the Unicorns. And maybe this is just the MO of Unicorns of Love because their game yesterday was also the one which had the slowest early game, it felt like, where both of these teams kind of just feeling each other out. If we're gonna if we're in for a little bit of a, a longer one, Jamada, is there a team that's really gonna favor that? Oh, I mean, I feel like when you think about how these comps interact with one another, how Atheta are almost always going to be wanting to try and dive into the Unicorn's uh, composition here, which is so, so efficient at kiting back for the most part. It's only really Dream Ace, Leona, that maybe feels a little bit out of place in that theme. Uh, but of course, Unicorns, they needed the option to maybe uh, return some engage, and that's why the Leona's there. 
I feel like unicorns are honestly quite comfortable with this current game state. I think Viego is going to scale into a bit of a monster here. I think Ari's almost always going to be useful, especially with the Everfrost. Uh, with all the short range champions, going to skip out being locked up by the chains as well. And of course, the threat of the resets, right? I think that's the biggest thing. Uh, if any of these members from a flare, you know, overstep whilst they're diving, which is obviously the big risk of diving, right? Going that one step too far forward and giving up your life. All of a sudden, you know, you're giving Lorox the Viego a, a flag and drag. You're giving him uh, a rotation of Silas spells, a grand entrance from the Rakan. It could be anything. And I think the later the game goes on, the bigger the threat of that is. So I think for Athleta right now, they really want to try and find some point on the map where they can leverage a strong side, actually leverage some kind of lead. Seems like right now, they're just not able to quite do that. Gabo being forced away back towards bot tier two as Ibo shoves in and crashes a wave on the bottom side. Lorox could even drop the Herald down here just to ensure that the tower drops, but could even just take it without. I know Gabby's playing the hard defense and is going to move towards Lurks. Takes away half his health bar. Dunks now back into his team and here comes Jarvan 4. Nice wallop into the wall though. It means that Ibo is going to be able to get away the Cataclysm. Will not save the tower as Lurks flashes over the wall. Looking to escape through the alcove. Gets a blast code out. But it's not going to be hit, avoiding the stun, the bring back and the damage from Atlanta. Cospec comes in with the ultimate. Doesn't want to go towards Lurks. Wants to turn towards the rest of the Unicorn's team that's turned up. The Jinx on will land in the side right. of his face. Square head on as Dream Race dives over the wall. Flashing away but the Ignite will burn him out. Cospec picks up another. It's two kills to the good for the PG in that side, but they do lose the tower. They do lose the tower, but they pick up those kills, and I think that's definitely going to feel good. Ends is also on the top side, entirely uncontested. This is a wave that's going to be probably lost out. It depends on whether or not Ends wants to just take this tower and immediately reset for some tempo. It seems like that will be the case. So honestly, I think I went out quite nicely here. They even up the gold lead yet again, and they just respond to what was a little bit of an overextension. Uh, from Unicorns there, Ibo sort of gets that Nara off underneath the tower, dives away, Lorax feels like then he's pressured to pick up this tower, we'll get the replay. But it will be after those events as Lorax, kind of a little bit too far away from his team at this point, right? Has to go an alcove game, gets the uh, Blast Cone as well. Does buy a lot of time to try and at least have a response from his teammates, but unfortunately it just means that Dream Race ends up hit cool out as well on the back end. We've nowhere to go. The flash is nice, but the ignite rolling was just enough as we're going to jump back into the action. Oh. As Rakan goes low, Cosmo needs to be careful. Diving away. Nice ultimate coming through from the side. Scat Dream Race once again. Ruby, though, goes low and is deleted by the Zarya. Ends is now going to chase on towards Dream Race. Press Madalena needs to be a little bit careful. Health bars not too high as we move towards oh, this okay. dragon. The snipe out from Ramsar, and that is going to be the excitement. The Zap doesn't land this time around, but Jinx is still feeling confident to reward forward. Flashing away from my dragon, but it's a nice Calicut and the dunk down is enough. But Ends is on a killing spree. Massive Nar ultimate into the wall at end, darting away, manages to survive for a second oh. longer. But Viego, this time with the reset, will he be able to get away? Zonix on the side, really, really low, diving back in. Lurox grabs another as Zonix sits and watches. Four members of Letter fall down, and it will be Unicorns of Love who move towards the Drake. And this is what we're talking about. If Avler can get things going first, then they can actually take down the first target. Things look not too bad for them, but the issue is if you start to see resets like that come out, it just feels so impossible to play. Unfortunately, Lorax just ends up taking over the fight to get a replay. And it's actually Ruby going on to Cospect and just kind of overreaches a little bit. Dives one too far forward and has to end up flashing up, but gets caught by the Everfrost of Zonix. Read up. Ruby's Fever uh, gets taken out by the Feverstorm. And at this point, they've kind of won out the team fight, but the health bars are so low. And this is the risk of running, you know, these dive compositions, these short range compositions into a comp that's so efficient and running backwards and away from you. And then it just turns into the Lorax show after this. My Dragon dives in the Cataclysm. It's not too bad with the stopwatch. They pick up Dreamer Ace, but unfortunately, it's just the resets on top of resets from Lorax here, who just picked up so many strong champions. The Heartbreaker after Heartbreaker. And unfortunately, that's what he does to the PG in that side. Which their hearts wins this fight. That brings Unicorns one Dragon closer to picking up that Infernal Soul. And Ibo's ultimate was absolutely insane into the wall in that fight as well. Able to catch out so many members of Aletta. Unfortunately, the Rift Herald unlikely to get too much work done as he's caught between a minion wave, but Ruby's moving up maybe to try and help it get through. It will fall. Gets a tiny bit of damage and clears out the wave, but an unfortunate turn of events to not have that second advantage really achieve very much. But Unicorns of Love grabbed their first team fight win of the game, find themselves about 2,000, just under 2,000 gold up at the 20 minute mark, but now they're pulling well, the they trigger moving towards Reptile, but he's going to be able to get away with Gale Force. It's not a summoner, but it's just as good, and we'll be able to see him out. Yeah, just able to get a force away from that one. Still has the safety of the item, and I thought I kind of just left scratching their heads here on that play afterwards. 
Only do expend, of course, uh, Conspect's uh, Flash and Ultimate. Flash definitely a much bigger timer, but they do get Reptiles, Gale Force. Maybe they can make a play off cooldown. I think more often than we will see here, Athlea, they're going to have to just do their best to stay within arm's reach mm. in terms of gold and try and contest that this Infernal Soul. I think Unicorns, they're just going to slow the game down now. Best that they can, not overextend in the side lane, not overextend in the mid lane either. We've seen the potential range of engage here from a player's team composition between the Rakan and Javan. Feels like you have to be two screens away or more. Otherwise, you are at risk of being Dovan. I think showing by Reptiles, my respect on the mid lane, just waits for the wave to be entirely delivered to him. And we'll probably have a little bit of downtime as Unicorns, I expect, will just try and keep a flare as far away from them as possible until this dragon spawns mm. up. I'm very. I've got a little bit of deja vu, Jamada, because I'm thinking back to the game that Unicorns were playing yesterday up against Bisons. It was around the third dragon where they really started to put on the style against them as well, where they managed to take the right pick, they made the right call, and it was a jinx that helped lead them through a massive team fight. It's exactly what we've seen right here up against that letter as well. Slightly different circumstances, it must be said, because it's two different, different games of League of Legends with two different compositions, but... Maybe Unicorns, as you said, with that slightly slower priority when it comes to team style. This could really be the turning point in most of their games where they decide this is where we need to start taking advantages. This is where our win condition starts to come into play. Yeah, I think the problem is when it comes to kind of the conditions of how both of these team comps want to fight, I think Unicorns just end up kind of outscaling sort of on, uh, on a level of Flair's kind of <laughs> conditions are pretty much conditional on do they blow up Reptile or not, mm. right? Are they able to blow up someone like Ruby or not who's going to just have pretty much too much uh, mobility in many of these scenarios where Ruby's getting dove onto and that's what just makes Ari so frustrating to play against. So it's more about can Athlea actually take down their high value targets before Unicorns are able to turn it around with their sort of kite back comp into any kind of recess and again that is the risk you run with a composition so dive heavy and engage heavy like Athlea's into a comp which has so many reset mechanics in general you saw that third dragon fight how low the health bars got just to take down one member mm. and that was an overextended Ari with only one charge of the ultimate left up so if Ruby's yeah. holding on to that ability for the next fight which you've got to imagine will be happening in about 40 seconds time things could be much, much harder for Atleta, and of course they found themselves in a bit more of a deficit now because they lost that fight, because they're fighting against one more Infernal in the pocket of Unicorns, and Atleta controlling the river don't want to give any opportunity for the Unicorns to move on through. Is Ivo moving around the side? He's got the range bar up, but the ultimate's oh. not going to land onto anyone. That's a big whiff, and that's a big ability going to go wanting from yeah. the Unicorns. And now Atleta are feeling confident to try and pull the trigger, get themselves that's going, deep. set into the back line. That's a big, deep play, but Gabo's going to be deleted. Reptile gets the first kill of the fight oh, no. as they move towards the Lurox. Lurox has to flash away from the Cataclysm. We'll be able to escape this time around, but the fight looks okay for Atleta on the side. As they move towards Ruby, he's going to dance away, puts in a bit of healing. Now can maybe we move towards Zonix. This is ebbing and flowing back and forth. Aleta take down one. They lose two for their troubles. But Zonix is low. Reptile on the side. Looking towards oh. Dragon. Needs to be careful. Kiting away. Ivo returns to the fight as Aleta are removed. That'll be it. Towards the Dragon. The zap. The shot. The jump from Nar. It's an ace for the Unicorns as they move towards the mid lane. Yeah, and it's just really well played by Unicorns. Ivo, even though he ends up whiffing on that armor, and honestly, the Meganar timing as well, in terms of being able to be online for the actual Dragon Spawn itself, was a little bit off. He makes up for it because he zones out and entirely on the top side of the fight by himself, whilst the diving party of Athlea, Athlea are basically trying to 3v3 the remainder of Unicorns. The rest of the sort of burst damage isn't quite there. It's just the bruisers of Athlea that are trying to take down some of the carries that remain up for Unicorns. Ivo, despite, again, an ultimate that definitely was a little bit lackluster. Plays a very, very big role in ensuring that Athlea end up losing that team fight. As we get the replay here, I think maybe just tried to leap into Naro. That's my best guess. Just miss uh, input the keys. And then it's just this flash forward. Gabo just goes too deep. I mean, look at where the rest of Athlea are. They're just not able to reach that level of range. Yes, the engage range is quite high on their composition, but it's just not that far. As you can see, Ents being forced away by Ivo, and actually it's Reptile at the same time. Ivo chases him down on the bomb side, even though they do find Lorox. It's now a 3v3 where, you know, the consistent kind of ranged burst damage is no longer there. And you imagine if Athlea are actually, you know, in a 4v4 with Zayu who's being protected, this is a fight that can definitely go their way. And this is an absolutely amazing flash 
by MX Dragon to try and lock down Ruby. But uh, unfortunately, I think got a charm out uh, on to the Silas just before the rest of the CC came in, and that's what stopped the, ma uh, the majority of the burst damage coming in from the mid laner of our Fleta. So Yukons find themselves the Infernal Soul, and that makes things much harder for them. Ruby needs to be careful, just going to dive on through. Remember, Ibo not at the scene of the crime right now. He's in bot lane trying to push towards that tower, but will be able to get there with a teleport if he decides to. Gabo is the one that's going to respond, you've got to imagine, but he's just thinking about staying around, maybe trying to get a flank or a play working, but Nara's going to be able to take the free inner tower in the bot lane. As no one's really pulling the trigger. Unicorns of Love really happy just to control the mid lane and allow Ibo to naturally move up towards them. Of course, there's a top lane inner if the Unicorns want to try and play towards that one as well. But Baron, potentially going to be the next thing that's fought over? Yeah, I think so. I, I think the big issue right now for Athleta and why they look so lost right there is because Gabo just outright loses in the 1v1. And Gabo wanted to stick around in the mid lane just in case the Unicorns tried to start Summit Core. Maybe they themselves are still thinking about trying to force the... 5v4, uh, but unsure whether or not Ibo would be able to teleport and respond. And you end up losing out on that bottom side tier 2 tower. And that's just gold that goes over. And like you say now, Unicorns hugging towards the Baron side. I think Athleta should be able to shove in this wave and then maybe actually slip into that side uh, of the map themselves and start to try and set up some vision. But you can see on the top side already, Unicorns have littered their red side jungle with wards right now. Mm. Complete control. Now it has to be swept away by Atheta. They're going to have to use a couple of sweepers to get rid of all of that vision. Ibo needs to be somewhat careful recalling in a brave position, but it's going to be Zonix just coming in to clear out the minions. Not looking to mess around with the Gnar this time. And that Baron could be disastrous if it's taken by Unicorns. I love that latter already up against it, against the Infernal Soul, against the team that has themselves a comfortable 5,000 gold lead at the 27 minute mark. Fortunately, Gold becomes less important as we move along in the game, but Lurox actually thinking about just starting Ooh. this one up. Yeah, I mean, just caught that base on reset, and as soon as that base actually goes on Vision, they just start this Baron. I mean, this should just end up dropping. It's still going to be at least three members here, but the issue is, look where my Dragon is too far. Baron's too gone. far away. Baron's going to be secured. You've got to imagine the smile is actually a little oh. bit late, but it will be secured <laughs> as the fight comes through. Gabo's deleted once again as Ivo marauds forward, gets a slow on to end, looking for something nice. Goes up in the end, caught out by the Wallop, and Lurox gets a second. They've got the Baron. They've got the soul. They've got the team fight. You have to imagine as a letter fall to the wind. Three members stay strong for now at least with five members holding the purple buff. How much can be gained as Zonix moving forward? Just trying to stop Io Bo from going B. But he doesn't want to go back. He wants to just warden and keep members at bay. They're pushing in towards this inner tower. Could they crack open the base? Yeah, they definitely can. Infernal Salt, Baron buff. The wave's on its way. Still 15 seconds on ends and Gabo. Zonix being shoved all the way out towards the top side by Ivo here. Misses out on the boomerang, so won't be able to shove out anymore. But I mean, if they wanted to, they could even consider sticking around. But Olmert's still coming back off cooldown. No use in trying to overextend. That has been Unicorn's MO so far throughout this game. Mm. They have definitely made a play or two, which maybe should have been a little more thoughtful of. Uh, that have punished. That was 15, almost 20 minutes ago. And Unicorn since then have been able to just keep Athleta at bay. And Athleta haven't really been able to find these cohesive engages where they can take down a high value target immediately and then force a numbers advantage off the back of that. It's all been about the resets. Ooh, Lorox has to ult over the wall, but now damage coming on through. Thinking fast from Raptile. Zonix is caught out, has to go gold, but will be deleted first of the fight. They managed to get the Cataclysm on to the Jinx. Ends on the other side of the fight, needs to be careful as Ruby moved towards him. Gets Ruby's the charm, the damage there, that's the kill. As Reptile is untouched, gets a double for the Silas. Moving towards Gabo, nice big shield, does a whole heap of damage. But Unicorns of Love simply do more. They move forward, find members and Baron. And you know what? I think Unicorns are a love about to go zero of 10-0 even at the Amazon European Masters. They are about to go 10-0 and you have to feel bad for Mahi Dragon and Zonix, man. Every time they come up against Unicorns, it just feels like they are unable to slay their demons. Of course, we'll have another shot next week, but Unicorns on this occasion too strong with the Night of Flair. A 1-1 one -one scoreline and will move to first in their group as they take their second win of the week. For Alara, the devil wears pink as Unicorns take a dominant victory to go 2-0 at the top of their group. And honestly, Unicorns calm, controlled, 
strong in team fighting situations, maybe a little bit questionable in the very early stages. Exactly what we've come to know and love. Yeah, exactly. And I think on the opposite side as well, Athlea did a good job of punishing those moments in the early stages where unicorns are maybe a little bit too docile, right? A little bit too uh, unwilling maybe to make a play or proactive play. Uh, and they were able to find these moments like that counter uh, gank on the bottom side or even, you know, responding to the overextension trying to drop the Herald on that bottom tier one. They had those pretty good moments, but unfortunately for them, Unicorns, they were just better after the 15 minute mark. And I think their comp as well really helped enable the fact that Aflea really just had to get the ball rolling with that dive comp. Well, we're going to be jumping to a short break now, but when we come back, it's gonna, we're going to be chatting to a couple of these players, and then we've got a massive game match too. Gamer Legion making their debut up against Team Phantasma. Don't go anywhere. We'll see you in a few minutes.